Welcome to Headline Simsbury. I'm Karen Hanville. We start today with some good news. Althea Graney will present a couple of different topics about SCTV. Hi, I'm Althea Graney, President of SCTV's Board of Directors. I want to thank you for watching and supporting SCTV. In case you missed our recent news, SCTV received a $10,000 grant that was made possible with the assistance of Richard D. Wagner, Jr. and the Richard D. Wagner and Madeline Lina F. Wagner Fund at the Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. A big thank you to Rick Wagner for his support of our cloud project. The grant money has been used to purchase the hardware needed to transmit programs for storage into the cloud. We ask for your patience and understanding as the staff and volunteers learn how to use the equipment and software that will, prov that will provide live coverage of town meetings and transmit our programs into the cloud for cable broadcast and on-demand viewing. Next, SCTV entered the Wells Fargo Works Project Contest to win $25,000 and a mentorship. To learn why we entered the contest, watch our video via a link on the SCTV Facebook page or at www.simsburytv.org. Help support our efforts by voting for us once a day, every day, until July 19th so we can continue to serve Simsbury. This past year, the SCTV Board of Directors looked at how digital technology has changed our processes and discovered that two-hour limits on programming were no longer needed. This election season, SCTV is introducing something new, a platform for candidates to introduce themselves to the voters in a short format to be aired together on the public channel. This is in, an, in addition to candidates producing any regular series programs or other programs about themselves. We are excited that residents seeking public office will be able to creatively share their ideas, qualifications, and plans they're probably providing you with the information you need to make good choices on Election Day. As always, SCTV provides Simsbury residents with the ability to share information and ideas through video programming on cable television and the Internet for free. Participate, volunteer, donate, get involved, or come for a tour. Our number is 860-658-1720. Our email is simtv at yahoo.com and our website is simsburytv.org. Communication is our business, so stay connected with SCTV, and have a wonderful day. Please remember to vote for SCTV to win at the Wells Fargo Works Project. We could really use the financial support. In other news, Simsbury First Selectman Lisa Hevner, joined by State Representative John Hampton, testified before Pura in support of an investigation into the upcoming October closing of the Simsbury Eversource Work Center on Hot Meadow Street. Said Hevner, quote, Pura's proposed decision recognizes that Eversource's plan to move equipment and 69 employees out of Simsbury to locations in Hartford, Cheshire, or Torrington could compromise safety by impacting emergency response times, unquote. In the proposed ruling, the fate of Eversource, S Simsbury would depend on whether a compliance filing by Eversource in October demonstrates that the closure plan will result in customer cost savings and would not adversely affect customer service, system reliability, and safety. In January, the town of Simsbury expressed in a correspondence to Eversource concern that CLMP's decision to move the work center will negatively impact public safety by increasing response times to emergencies. In particular, CLMP's emergency response protocol for Priority 1 incidents requires a response time of no more than 30 minutes, a response time that cannot be guaranteed given the distance of the towns identified for the relocation. The correspondence went on to note that Simsbury was hard hit by the October 2011 storm, which left streets blocked and Simsbury residents without power for days. It is hard to see how moving the work center will not degrade Eversource's emergency response capability, said Hevner. A final decision is expected to be issued by Pura in July. 
Protein Sciences Corporation recently announced data showing that flu block quadrivalent outperformed a traditional influenza vaccine last season and was better at preventing the flu by 31%. Flu block contains three times more active ingredients than traditional vaccines and produced significantly higher immune responses to the A strains of influenza, especially H3N2, in the recent study. Flu block is highly purified and does not contain influenza virus antibiotics, formaldehyde, preservatives, latex, gluten, or gelatin, unlike other flu vaccines. This vaccine is approved for people 18 and older. The most common side effect from flu block is pain at the site of injection. Also headache, fatigue, or muscle ache can occur. If you have severe muscle weakness or a severe allergic reaction, be sure to tell your doctor. Vaccination with flu block may not protect all individuals. And for more information about flu block, you can visit www.flublock.com or you can call 203-686-0800 for more information. The death of Melissa Milan, a mother and longtime Simsbury resident, is a tragedy that still, eight months later, is left unresolved. That is why the town of Simsbury's police department is continuing its ongoing investigation into her death on Iron Horse Boulevard. An anonymous reward of $40,000 is being offered for information leading to the arrest and conviction of the person or persons responsible for this murder. The reward is being offered to ensure that every possible legitimate lead is identified. In addition, Chief Ingvertsen disclosed that the police department has some physical evidence from the crime scene that will help to identify the person or persons responsible for her death. Simsbury police investigators have been working with local, state, and federal agencies to analyze evidence and follow all leads. Individuals with any information that would assist the town of Simsbury in this investigation should contact the Simsbury Police Department detectives at 860-658-3145. The Hartford Symphony Orchestra's 2015 Talcott Mountain Music Festival continues on July 17th at 7.30 p.m. with Classical Night Fever. They invite you to travel back to the era of disco bell bottoms, big hair, and platform shoes. The night will be led by Hartford Symphony Orchestra music director Carolyn Kwan, and the program will feature such groovy favorites as Disco Inferno, Get Down Tonight, Stayin' Alive, Dancing Queen, Car Wash, and so much more. The mission of the performance is to funkatize the masses by marrying the lavish sounds of the orchestra with brilliantly arranged disco hits by the likes of Donna Summer, the Bee Gees, Barry White, the Village People, and more. They take the stage with styling afros, head-turning retro costume changes, and some of the coolest platform shoes this side of the Milky Way galaxy. The Performing Arts Center at Simsbury Meadows is the place to be with gates opening at 6 p.m. and the education tent open from 6 to 7.15 p.m. Families can enjoy free activities such as music-themed games and crafts, the instrument zoo, and youth performances. Advanced single lawn tickets are $20 for adults and $5 for children 12 and under. Adult single lawn tickets are $25 at the gate. For more ticketing information, you can contact the Hartford Symphony Orchestra Ticket Services at 860-987-5900, or you can visit them online at hartfordsymphony.org. The rain date is Saturday, July 18th at the same time. The Hartford Symphony Orchestra has just announced that it is launching a search for the position of assistant conductor. The Hartford Symphony Orchestra is establishing the position of assistant conductor to expand its reach in the greater Hartford community. 
provide additional resources for concert programming and conducting support development of education programs, and assist in strengthening stakeholder relationships. This is an integral position for the growth of the orchestra as the Hartford Symphony Orchestra implements a new strategic framework and related support structures. Deadline to apply is September 1st, and any questions about the application process should be directed to Steve Collins, the Hartford Symphony Orchestra Director of Artistic Operations and Administrations, and you can email him at scollins at hartfordsymphony.org. To apply, you send one email with completed application form, cover letter, resume, and video files or links to assistant conductor at hartfordsymphony.org. For more information and to download the application, visit their website. Mary Doyle Clark is here to give you the latest Senior Center update. Hi, I'm Mary Doyle Clark, and here's what's going on at the Simsbury Senior Center. Medicare can be complicated with its multiple parts and the many choices it offers but learning the basics will help you navigate this health care program. Join us at the Senior Center on Thursday, July 16th from 1 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. or Monday, July 20th from 5 p.m. to 6.30 p.m. for a free seminar called Medicare 101. Learn what Medicare options best meet your needs and if you are over 65, educate yourself about the many laws and programs that may be available to you. The Simsbury Senior Center and the Historical Society are collaborating to prevent pedal power on Thursday, July 23rd at 10 a.m. Visit a recreated 18th century hands-on workshop exhibit which depicts the evolution of the bicycle, incorporating some of the collection at the Historical Society. This program is free and will take place at the Simsbury Historical Society, located at 800 Hot Meadow Street. Travel with us for lunch at the Connecticut Shore on Monday, July 27th. The bus will depart Simsbury at 10 a.m. and arrive at Bill's Seafood in Westbrook. Enjoy outdoor dining on a coastal estuary, fresh fish, lobster rolls, chowder, and more. A dial-a-ride pass is necessary to go on this trip. Call the Senior Center for more information. The Simsbury Senior Center is located at 754 Hot Meadow Street in the Eno Memorial Hall building. Our hours are Mondays, 8.30 a.m. to 7 p.m., Tuesday through Thursday, 8.30 a.m. to 4.30 p.m., and Fridays, 8.30 a.m. to 1 p.m. Call us at 860-658-3273 for additional information or go to our website. Thanks for watching. See you at the Senior Center. Summer is a great time to get out and take advantage of the nice weather and you can enjoy the beautiful scenery on the bike trail when you borrow a bike from Simsbury Bike. Riders can borrow a bike for up to 24 hours with a $10 refundable deposit at multiple locations including Fitzgerald's, J. Foster Ice Cream, Live Everyday Physical Therapy, Mitchell Auto Group, and the Simsbury Inn. This service is available until the end of October to all bikers over 18 years of age. For more information, you can email them at simsburyfreebike at gmail.com. If you're a fan of science fiction and fantasy, the Friends of the Simsbury Public Library will host an author panel on Saturday, July 18th from 1 to 3 p.m. in the library's program room. Although this program is free, you will need to call the library to reserve your seat. To get more information or reserve a seat, you can call them at 860-658-7664. Melissa Brett joins us, and she's here to talk about ant control. Hello, my name is Melissa Brett. My husband John and I own and operate well in the hardware here in the center of Sinsbury on Station Street. Today, I would like to talk with you about ants. During these hotter summer months, ants can become an issue in your home and in your yard. Outside, ant mounds can cause your soil to become sandy and in turn your grass will be weak. 
Now there are many different types of ants, from the tiny sugar ants to the large carpenter ants. Here in Connecticut, there are three most common ants, indoor house ants, outside pavement ants, and the carpenter ants. Many summer fertilizers have an insect control that will kill existing pests, such as ants, fleas, ticks, spiders, and other such insects. Typical New England ant hills are small, usually pushing up the soil, looking more sandy than the rest of the lawn's topsoil. Now observe the hole to make sure it's not a ground bee nest. To destroy the ant colony, you could pour scalding hot water about two gallons into the hole. But remember, you may be just displacing the ants and not killing them. Granular killers do work, but not immediately, and they need to get watered into the soil. But granulars don't always get the entire colony. The most effective ant killer is baiting with borax, typically found in the brand Taro outside. Borax is a systemic killer that is shared with the colony, including the queen, and is very effective. Now inside, ants are on the hunt for food, especially anything sweet or with a high moisture content. Besides the obvious of keeping your counters and floor as clean as possible, there are other things you can do to remove these pests. Make sure you have properly sealed any cracks, especially around windows, doors, and window air conditioners. Ants are typically found in your kitchen and bathrooms because of the water and food options. You can either use an indoor ant spray, and some are made from natural plant extracts. You can also use a bait station. Like the outside bait station, borax-based ones are the most effective. You will want to place the bait where you see the activity. The ants will swarm to the bait for a day or two. Don't deter them from doing this. Allow the busy workers to take the bait back to their nest so they'll be shared with the colony and they will all be eliminated. Now don't put out an ant bait if you don't see ants. You don't want to unnecessarily attract the ants with what they see as a treat. Now with carpenter ants, a different plan of attack needs to be drawn up. Typical ant baits and controls aren't as effective. And once you start seeing the ants, they may have already caused damage to wood that you can't see. Doing a perimeter treatment around your home is very effective to prevent them from coming into your house. Avoid having firewood piled next to your home, your deck, or shed. If you have timbers for landscaping, you should treat that wood every few years with an effective carpenter ant treatment. And if you have seen carpenter ants, you will need to find where they are nesting and kill the entire colony. Permethrin is the most effective chemical to do this, but you do need to use it exactly as directed. You will also need to see if the ants have caused any wood damage. You may want to have it inspected by a professional. And if you have any other questions about ant control, don't hesitate to ask us. And if you have a topic that you would like featured on this segment, let us know. Visit our website at www.weldonhardware.com. I look forward to the next edition of Headline Sinsbury. Remember, we're at your service. Thank you and God bless. To stock up on all the delicious and healthy foods that summer has to offer, stop by the Simsbury Farmer's Market. Now open every Thursday until the end of September. You can shop local from 3 to 6 p.m. and take advantage of the many offerings, including fruits, organic and heirloom produce, herbs, flowers and plants, meat, eggs, Italian ice, honey, maple syrup, and handmade soaps. It's a great place to find a unique gift to bring to friends and family when visiting during the summer or to tuck away for the winter holidays. You'll find new vendors each week along with all the regulars, live entertainment, and crafts for the kids. You can find the Farmer's Market at Simsmore Square, located on Hot Meadow Street. Police Officer Lauren Devon is here with some summer safety tips. Hi, I'm Officer Devon, the Community Services Officer for the Simsbury Police Department. It's officially summer and I wanted to take a few moments to talk about some cool tips for a safe summer trip. First, before you hit the road, it's important to perform a few basic safety checks on your vehicle tires. Take a few minutes to inspect your vehicle's tires. You want to look for signs of excessive and uneven wear. Use the penny test to determine if it's time to replace your tires. Place a penny in the tread with Lincoln's head upside down. If you can see the top of Lincoln's head, your vehicle needs new tires. 
If you find uneven wear across the tire's tread, it might mean that your tires need rotation or alignment. This is also a good time to check to ensure that you're traveling with a spare tire. Also, don't forget to check, check your tire's inflation pressure. The correct pressure for your tires is listed on a label on the driver's door pillar or in the vehicle owner's manual. Lights, C and B seen. Please make sure that all the lights on your vehicle are in working order. Check your headlights, brake lights, turn signals, emergency flashers, and interior lights. Towing a trailer? Be sure to check your trailer's brake lights and turn signals. Trailer light connection failure is a common problem and it can be very dangerous. Air conditioning. Check your air conditioning performance before you travel. A lack of air conditioning on a hot summer day affects people who are in poor health or are sensitive to heat such as children and older adults. You may not always know if there's been a safety recall on your vehicle. The National Highway Traffic Safety Administration, also known as NHTSA, has a vehicle identification number lookup tool. Use the website below to quickly check for a recall on your vehicle. Prevention and planning may take a bit of time initially, but it'll spare you from dealing with the potential hazards of traveling in an unsafe vehicle later. Next, I want to remind you to buckle up every trip, every time. All passengers should wear their seatbelts every time they're riding or driving in a vehicle. Set the example for children by always wearing your seatbelt. When traveling with children, take every precaution to keep them safe. Make sure that car seats and booster seats are properly installed. If you have a question about a child seat or would like to set up an appointment to have a certified car seat technician look at your car seat, please contact the Simsbury Police Department car seat line at 860-658-3180 and make an appointment today. I brought along a few different types of child safety seats. There are many different brands of child safety seats on the market. They all look a little different and offer different features. These are just an example of the three basic types of child safety seats. Please be familiar with your child's seats. Each seat comes with an owner's manual and it's important to read and understand it. Look for the date of manufacture on the car seat. It can be found in a sticker on the back of the seat or manual. The sticker would look something similar to this. All seats expire within six years from the date of manufacture. The first seat I brought with me is a rear facing car seat. These seats are appropriate from children from birth right around to age one. There are many different types of rear facing infant seats on the market and they all have different height and weight limits. It's very important that you read the manual that comes with the safety seat and you're familiar with its height and weight restrictions. This particular seat is a Kiko key fit, which means that it's appropriate for children up to 30 pounds until the height of their head is within one inch of the top of the seat. Connecticut state law dictates that children remain rear facing until they're one year old and 20 pounds. However, the American Academy of Pediatrics recommends that parents keep their children in a rear facing seat until age two. Depending on the height and weight restrictions for your rear seat, this might mean that you need to transition your child into a convertible car seat. This next car seat is an example of a convertible car seat. Convertible car seats can be used in both the rear and forward facing positions by making just a few minor adjustments to the seat. Convertible car seats have higher weight and height limits than infant seats and can be used in the rear facing position for longer. This particular seat is an even flow Titan. It can be used in the rear facing position for children up to 35 pounds or until the top of their head is within one inch of the top of the seat. Once the child reaches these restrictions, they should be transitioned into the forward facing position. Once in the forward facing position, this seat is appropriate for children up to 50 pounds and 47 inches. Once your child has reached the height and weight limits of their forward facing car seat, they can then transition into a booster seat. This Evenflow Maestro seat is an example of a booster seat. This st seat still has a five point harness for use until your child is big enough to properly fit into a seat belt. A seat belt should lie across the middle of the chest and shoulders, not near the neck or face. The lap belt should fit low and snug on the hips and upper thighs and not across the belly. Once your child meets these requirements, the harness can be removed and this seat can be transitioned into a belt positioning booster seat. Again, this is just one example of a booster seat. There are many different seats on the market and it's important to be familiar with the restrictions of your seat. 
This seat can accommodate children who weigh between 22 and 110 pounds and are up to 57 inches tall. Connecticut state law requires children to ride in an approved seat until they're seven years old and 60 pounds. It is our recommendation that children ride in the rear of the vehicle until they reach 13 years old. Again, if you have any questions regarding your car seat or car seat installations, please don't hesitate to contact the Simsbury Police Department car seat line at 860-658-3180. Your call will be returned promptly. Aside from just seat belts, there are other dangers to children and cars that you should know about. One of those dangers is heat stroke. Heat stroke can occur when a child is left unattended in a parked vehicle. Never leave a child alone in the car, not even for a few minutes or with the engine running. Vehicles heat up quickly. If the outside temperature is in the low 80s, the temperature inside the vehicle can reach deadly levels in just a few minutes, even with the window rolled down. A child's body temperature rises three to five times faster than that of an adult. In the state of Connecticut, it's illegal to leave a child unattended in a motor vehicle. Heat stroke can apply to pets as well. Even with the windows cracked, the temperature inside of a car can reach over 120 degrees in a matter of minutes and this can prove fatal for your pets. Summer is a special time of year and it's important to us that you stay safe while you enjoy every minute of it. Please don't hesitate to contact us with any questions or concerns. Our routine number is 860-658-3100 and for emergencies, please dial 911. SCTV would like to recognize some college students home for the summer who have helped behind the scenes this past month. Not only are they getting great experience, they're also a big help to SCTV. Thank you to Nick Sinecori, Sarah Kimball, Teresa Cortez, and Danielle Weingartner. And please remember to vote for SCTV to win at the Wells Fargo Works Project. Every vote counts and you can vote every day. That's it for this week. I'm Karen Hanville, and we are SCTV, your town, your schools, your government. Funding for Simsbury Community Television is provided in part by contributions from viewers like you. Thank you.